Thank you all for joining us and uh, welcome to SBAR, our webinar on digitalization of industrial plants, 3D modeling and digital trends. My name is Pradesh Kumar and I'll be your co-host today, inshallah. We are thrilled to have 3 d a renowned company based in Poland. So uh, they will be joining us for this event and I'm really honored to introduce our main speakers, Lucas Dragon, the head of sales and customer supporting at 3 d l i n g and Mark Basic, the general director, CEO and co-owner of 3 d l i n g Both of them are leading experts in the application of 3D LiDAR scanning for industrial purposes. And Lucas has an extensive background in the 3D scanning industry. So before joining 3 d l i n g he served as a development director at a consulting firm specializing in total quality management systems. And uh, Marek, as I mentioned, is uh, the di general director and CEO and uh, the co-owner of 3 d l i n g He is also responsible for uh, the development of web panel visual plan software and their insights today will be really invaluable. So before moving further, I would like to share to you a small video with you, which uh, will help you get insights and more understanding our, uh, about our company as well. I hope... Uh, You guys were just watching the video, so I'll just uh, like to play it again for uh, all our attendees who have just joined us. So, I'm just uh, sharing the video with you guys. Over the years, humankind has been on the search for new technologies that simulate human intelligence in machines. Machines programmed to think and act like humans. In just the past few years, Drones have become widely introduced and adopted by various businesses and governmental organizations around the world. SBAR provides a unique service in Oman. Since 2017, SBAR's forward-thinking technology has been applied across the nation, setting up a dynamic future for a wide range of clients in both the private and public sectors, providing complete solutions driven by revolutionary commercial and industrial technologies tailored to any business requirements. Our innovative solutions harness the power of artificial intelligence and drones to transform the way our clients carry out their operations with accurate and innovative technologies in different fields. Drones have been successfully integrated into surveying efforts to perform land surveys, photogrammetry, 3D mapping, topographic surveying and more. capturing data up to five times faster than conventional methods. At SBAR, we will always bring you the latest technologies in the field of your work. We develop customized artificial intelligence empowered products and solutions to address the complex needs of our clients. Using highly intelligent data management platforms, SBAR enables businesses to process, analyze and deliver insights from aerial data accurately and efficiently. Adopting our latest solutions across industries provides a range of operational and financial benefits. SBAR helps businesses to overcome the most complex challenges. We develop and deploy our drones and AI-powered solutions to bring safety, reliability and cost-effectiveness for all our clients. SBAR's vision is to be the leading drone and artificial intelligence powered solution provider in the GCC with a mission to help businesses and investors improve operational reliability and efficiency, enabling higher investment returns. Professionalism and dedication are at the heart of what we do. Our team of experts and highly trained technicians strive to deliver the very best of services and are invested in the success of every client project. Technological advancements are rapidly shaping the blueprint of how business will be conducted in the future. Businesses can with no doubt expect to see more process automation and efficiency, increasing productivity and helping you make better, faster decisions. SBAR So ladies and gentlemen, there was a short uh, brief about our company and I hope uh, that was really informative. And in this uh, webinar, we will be delving into the fascinating world of digitalization in industrial plants, focusing on uh, 3D scanning and modeling. 
So uh, before uh, moving forward, we will uh, explore the benefits of uh, using 3D LiDAR scanners, discuss the latest advancements in the field, and address any questions that you may have. If you have any questions during the presentation, please feel free to type them in to the Q&A box that is uh, being uh, displayed in your Teams. And we will have a dedicated Q&A session at the end of the webinar to answer your queries. Now, without uh, any further ado, I would like to hand over uh, the floor to Lucas and Marek to lead us through today's presentation. And once uh, Lucas and Marek, ask, uh, they conclude their presentations, we will open the floor for questions from our participants. Please remember to submit your questions only in the Q&A sections and not in the chat. We will address the questions one by one. Lucas will read out each question and provide the answers. So, Lucas, Marek, the microphone is all yours. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for Hi. Thank you for the introduction. Thank you, um, Fidesz, for, for your um, uh, invitation and introduction. Um, our uh, uh, companies have a fruitful partnership, so uh, it, it will be. Um, we are glad to uh, be here in, and present what a uh, little bit more details about 3D uh, 3D learning and 3D modeling. Okay, so uh, let me share. Uh, uh, a presentation. You probably can see uh, the presentation at the moment. All right. So, hello everyone. My name is Lukas Dragun, and I'm here with uh, Marek Bashik, who is the CEO of 3D Link. And today, uh, we are going to present and discuss the digitalization issues uh, of industrial plants. So we would like um, to introduce our approach to 3D, 3D modeling as a part of digital twins, uh, which are also useful for during the working with large projects containing stuff like the elements and complex therapy. So, yeah. We will go uh, through the main topics, starting with general goals and purposes of industrial digitalization. Uh, so, when we would like to show the, uh, you were in how we begin a building of a digital thing, so starting with reference scanning and then using the point cloud uh, on the second stage called digital plant, so it could be the next, uh, next step. And after that, Marek uh, will tell you a bit about uh, with the models, with the uh, environment, and um, so that are important uh, finally. Uh, and we would like to show you some uh, 3D examples and application how to use uh, how to use. So first, it's a uh, uh, what is an inductor in digitalization uh, uh, and why it is so uh, important nowadays. Let me share uh, this screen. So, mainly industry customers are focusing on main challenges. At the, at the moment, engineers working in energy, in energy industry, and oil and gas, they handle very complex projects. And we, are, we realize that the managers and engineers of industrial sites are increasingly facing the new and more complex decisions. So very often we've been complete information. Uh, so by building digital in, we are able to immediately and virtually compare and test and access uh, a cutting uh, in the decision time just to dates and sometimes even hours. So engin engineers face uh, challenges related to safety, the regulatory compliance, uh, sustainability, the uh, and particularly when dealing with inefficient and manual process. So having digital data like the 3D model engineers can react faster than before uh, to occur problems and avoid costly breakdowns, for example. Yeah, so additionally, uh, modernization uh, and modernization projects faster and more accurate with the lower cost uh, because all of the, uh, the models are already done and need to be uh, prepared. 
for the induction very quick. So what are the benefits of virtual 3D models? So contacting to the, the industry and, uh, and basing on their and our experience, there are some uh, more important For example, the pre uh, precise representation of the piping system. So <clears throat> engineers can identify potential issues and errors before physical components are produced. And, uh, of course, reducing costly mistakes and enhancing uh, a safety. Suppliers can design and prepare modernization faster because they have already, uh, they can work with that point cloud and can uh, manage this with uh, mm -hmm. uh, some uh, um, uh, measure ads and uh, can be uh, on, uh, on site. Uh, in virtual world, just like it uh, can be uh, in a real world. And simulation and optimization, engineers can simulate the entire piping system from the dying installation. So it is also uh, uh, good. So everyone involved can visualize the system, spot issues, and discuss the uh, solution when we have this uh, digitalizer and show it on the one screen. So Just to give you imagination about the laser scanning and 3D modeling applications, it is not only industrial application, uh, all, and engineering design and digital plan and offshore codes, but also architecture, heritage, urban planning. So we will not discuss it in, uh, in a bit about that. We will focus on industrial applications. And just as one of the examples of the blow up event, uh, Uh, so here you can see the analysis of the formation uh, for the blowout preventer. So this part is uh, dealing with a special outlet preventing blowups and disaster on offshore uh, driven platforms. So at the moment, it's a, a legal issue after some uh, disasters uh, which were uh, in the past. Uh, so the model was completely made in MicroStation and uh, then uh, exported to Aviva software uh, as a step files. And the exact and accurate documentation of our presenters is related also to the safety and legal issue. Yeah. All right. The next uh, is uh, uh, just uh, one imagination about the, uh, the, our uh, bond cloud and laser scanning job, which we done in Kuwait International Airport. Uh, yeah. And some of them in the offshore projects, here's an example of data analysis uh, of offshore uh, installation. And we did the, this as a pilot survey of the commission and oil tanker installation. And the last, uh, the I think the most wider uh, uh, purpose uh, following point cloud registration as an as built model was created for the entire plan. The model uh, of this mid sized site it contained a, a full database and catalog for the piping in Aviva uh, E3D software from the design model and set of new ISO drawings. Uh, that were um, produced based on that. And here I can sh share you with some uh, movie, uh, uh, a design work based on the previously created 3D model, uh, prepared on the scanner Power Cloud. And uh, so due to the modernization projects, such as the carbonization or increasing efficiency or energy saving, uh, the engineer company prepare the pipe uh, construction. So in this way, it is possible to compare an existing infrastructure with a new project and decide which part need to be removed and uh, need to be uh, collected. And after that, uh, a replacement simulation, just like uh, you can see at the moment, uh, is done. So including collision analysis, uh, it can be performed. So it is necessary to plan the replacement activities well and not lose time during the installation uh, probe. All right, so uh, it is very important uh, also that uh, the last scanning should 
uh, defers to receive uh, you know, such benefits. Process coming is always the beginning and the basis, and it is extremely important to do it very well and precisely. So, how does the laser scanning technology works? We see the animation. So, in order to ensure appropriate measurements, accuracy, and quality in the auto scanning, we assume a detailed implementation frame. And we are talking here about geodetic uh, measurements where we establish temporary and permanent control points. Uh, the points are placed on the state of structural elements, uh, distributed over the entire area, covered by the sky. So the control points will be aligned uh, using the proper method, just like here. So that in the end, the accuracy throughout the entire plant will be up to 5 millimeters. So later on, after measurements, we'll prepare the uh, real scanning with the uh, um, yes, data scanners, and all those scanners are pointed in the uh, right uh, places. Uh, and based on that, we can have uh, on cloud coverage. You can see it is an example of scan location, the net location, uh, give us more information about the uh, plant, about the site, and then uh, we need to uh, register all the uh, points uh, together with our uh, software, and based on that, we can have the view of call uh, site and this is all the API. All right. So as soon as we have already performed and measure performed measurements and scanning, we can already wrap uh, the third benefit. And these third benefits we can have with uh, uh, with a stage uh, with a software called with panel, and this is the this is the first purpose of that and intermediate step to the full model. Uh, so we provide the web panel uh, as a tool for working on point clouds, panorama views and model inside. So this is a very important digitization, uh, digitization point um, of the plant on the plant digitalization map. So just a few examples. Uh, just like here from chemical plant in Cove, Scotland, and uh, first is uh, display models. Uh, display models can be a point cloud, can be a panorama view, and of course, 3D model, and all of them can combine, be combined together under one uh, viewing and, and sharing uh, tool. Additional one, uh, uh, combined with the uh, 3D model, is web panel uh, assets uh, management and class analysis. So here we have um, uh, already prepared uh, uh, design of the of, of the piping, uh, which can be uh, implemented in, uh, in point cloud or a panorama view just to verify the, the collisions uh, uh, during the uh, next step, I mean, and the installation. So we can prepare with that. All right, so the next is a uh, mm. uh, simulation when we want to check uh, uh, where a new installation of TAN will be placed. So we can uh, perform a simulation on a simplified fit model. And we call this uh, 3D marks. Uh, and using work of panel functions, we are able to precisely, uh, precisely locate the object and discuss it with a team and supplier uh, responsible for, uh, for the further um, installation. So this is the next one. And the last example, when we have already prepared the time uh, of the object, we can use that and put into the panorama view or, or the point cloud just to plan properly uh, the installation 
uh, and to avoid uh, some uh, mistakes uh, later on and wasting the time. All right, so this is the, the first uh, stage, and uh, the next is going to be a 3D, uh, 3D model. Uh, so I will ask Marek to uh, share with you and give you some more uh, details regarding that. Right. I, go, I, I hope connection is still okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, let's, uh, yeah, let, let's start from Mara. Uh, Right, right now about the, some, some of some of the introductions about 3D models. In general, the things I want to show you is just quite straightforward for us. But for for some of the, our clients, this is not that uh, clear. That's why I would like to kind of uh, bring to you the, to bring to your attention some of the some of the details. So here you can see that uh, in general we have uh, three uh, types of the model. Oftentimes, our clients they are asking what is the what is uh, what is the difference between the models, you know. So, like I would like to right now summary or summary that uh, that difference. First thing, non-intelligent model just uh, just present geometry. Objects are distributed into layers. There is no other information assigned into the into the objects. In general. Um, if the solid models is built from primitive objects, uh, lay, later on uh, we can use those objects into conversion into in the intelligent model. Uh, later on in the presentation, I will show you the uh, the, the, the information about the primitives. This is, it could, I will bring to your attention later on. In general, uh, solid models are useful for clash detection mainly. Uh, in, in the context of the new design. So here, uh, uh, here, uh, I'll show you the, the short animation. Here is the animation showing the clash detection based on the solid core. So like uh, we are simulating a, a removal of, of, of the pipe. Uh, the whole simulation is performed within Navi's work software. Uh, so Navi's works can generate clash reports, and those reports are saved into HTML file. As Lukas earlier explained, we, we, we have web panel platform, and those uh, clash reports they could be uploaded in uploaded into web panel and shared with uh, with with everybody involved in the project. Because the difference between Webpanel and uh, Navisworks is that Navisworks is a standalone software, whereas our solution is is, is online solution available for everybody who is interested. Everybody who can uh, just log in and, and, and see the, the the reports from Navisworks. So these are the clash, uh, clash detection based on the solid model. Uh, okay, uh, next slide. Um, next type of the model, we call it primitive type model. Uh, in general, uh, this is like a similar to the previous object, previous type of the model, but, but the difference is that it, it, it also contains the tags, which means that the, the additionally to the, additionally to the, uh, just the geometry, that some of the objects, for example, equipment, they are named. Uh, so, for example, this could be useful for some sort of inventory tool. Again, we can we can present some of these examples on on the based on the web panel. Right now, you can see you can see the the three D model and those little uh, tanks. These are the you know names of the objects, and you can kind of search through the model, and you can like you can zoom in to the objects, essentially, so you could know where the or where certain objects are. Okay, um, so here, 
This is, this is a dark model. And the next, like the next uh, type of the model is intelligent model. The one that, you know, the one that uh, in general clients are, are for. Uh, the, the intelligent model contains everything what I listed before, which is geometry on those of talks. But the crucial difference between the intelligent model is the hierarchy of the model. It means that all the objects, they have relation, connections between each other. That means that uh, also the, 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 they, they also include uh, references to catalogs according to different specification. And uh, in general, the difference between the intelligent model and other uh, type of the models I mentioned before is that here we can we can generate ISO drawings. We can actually okay. gen in general drawings that are useful for 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 fabrication. We can also link those uh, models with the PNIDs, and we can run sim various simulations. Here I'll show you first. Uh, first case, which is drawings, ISO drawings. Uh, once the model is is is, is uh, already created, um, generation generation of the ISO drawings is just straightforward. It's just within one click, uh, and ISO drawings it's just uh, information ready for 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 to be sent for the workshops. And uh, other. Uh, other application is of the intelligent model. You can see that we can link the model with PNIDs. So we can, for example, uh, link all of the tags between that are, that are existing in the PNIDs with the tags existing in the model. And then we can kind of, uh, uh, we can manage those two uh, information together. Uh, what else? And here we can also run simulations, different simulation. Uh, in this case, this is the simulation based on on the intelligent model. Uh, <clears throat> just checking the flow of the of, of the bikes. What else? Uh, okay. Uh, right now, uh, it is. Uh, I think it's worth explaining that we have different uh, CAA, uh, CIA platform, and this stands for CAD Aided Engineering. And uh, there are two types. Well, and uh, both of the types have some advantages and disadvantages. Uh, for example, uh, the first type is the database-driven uh, software, which is which uh, which uh, general can handle a big big areas, big sites, and uh, it is easy to work simultaneously on the on the projects. In disadvantage is that. In general, these uh, platforms are very costly, and administration is a bit complicated, and uh, and the skills is scarce. It means it means that it's more difficult to find a personnel who can handle that type of the software. And uh, for example, the, I list here the two softwares: Aurora E3D and Intergal Smart 3D. These are the software that we both we can like kind of work 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 with. Um, there is a second type of the software, which is a standard file-driven software, and this uh, gains the advantage is that it is not so expensive as the other one. It mainly costs more or less same as a standard CAD software, but it's easier to use. It's easier to find the people who can handle it. But this advantage is that it is. Not that good when we want to use it for a big, big projects, and it's very hard to manage uh, uh, simultaneous work with, with on the big project. 
uh, the projects has to be divided, and then once the project is done, they have to be kind of linked together. And this is so this this causes a lot of a uh, lot of lot of extra work. And there are, we mentioned here two type of the software. First one is AutoCAD Plan three three uh, D and Open Plan is the best best Bentley platform. On both platforms, we we've we've conducted projects and we had some experience. But uh, right now, we move on to the section which uh, lists uh, in in essential input from the client during the modeling process. This is this is actually crucial because oftentimes we have some kind of a uh, like we have a clients who they don't perhaps they don't fully understand the process, and it is. It is very important to, to to clarify before the project starts. In general, the first stage is that we want to clarify that if the, the digitalization pro project, when it uh, the, the key to the success is involvement of the client, uh, because uh, it is quite clear that uh, if we want to create an intelligent model. And all the information that is existing, uh, but that the client can 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 give us, they quite often they are not consistent with each other, and we have to kind of resolve a lot of uh, issues and a lot of conflicts. And and quite often, uh, clients needs to, client need to be involved in, into some kind of a decision process. So the first stage is just the data collection uh, from the site. Just is a laser scanning, as Lukas earlier explained. This is this is quite straightforward. And usually, this process is relatively fast. But this is just the first step. The next step, the client needs to deliver all everything what it has, all all the documentation, mainly P and IDs, but also some equipment lists, etc. Um, but as mentioned. Quite often, pin IDs are very, very kind of old, uh, not up to date, and, and sometimes non-existing. But that means that before we can start uh, modeling, we have to kind of identify all of the objects on the site. For example, we can do it using the uh, web panel platform that was kind of presented before. Uh, also, the, the crucial information is this, the pipe structure and the catalog specification. In this case, the client needs to be aware that it has to have some 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 kind of a support uh, from 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 uh, from his uh, his employees. It's important to have some kind of a skills uh, because uh, in that case, without any support from the client. Uh, managing the the, 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 the catalogs would be very very difficult. Uh, what else? What other, what other information uh, is needed in order to create the three D model? Uh, uh, if uh, oftentimes uh, when we start our project, uh, the client is is needs to need to update its tagging system. Uh, this is this is this sometimes tags. Are some tags might be there, might be existing, but like quite often they are very old, and and the, some objects there are not some elements, equipments that are not named at all. Uh, this was decision making process. This uh, it is it is uh, I have mentioned it before that is crucial to implement some 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 support from the client in the case of inconsistencies in the documentation. Uh, all I mentioned before the the, the card platforms that there has to be some kind of a decision what platform uh, we need to create the project and there are some pros and cons as I explained before and also the client needs to be needs to develop some plan how to update the the model when the model is done so that during the maintenance. This is this is this is clear that that uh, the plant and is changing, but the model needs to be changed as well. Uh, just to there's one important point that I would like to raise here as well that we quite often kind of uh, raises some misunderstanding. It's it's 
it, it, it's called, I'll call it accuracy of the fitting uh, of the model versus the displacements of the objects. It means that when we laser scanning is quite accurate, we can we can kind of uh, detect some, some we can kind of fit the objects and detect objects within millimeters, but uh, installations that are probably installations that are old, they often have some displacement. For example, you can see the displacement of the pipe, displacement of the B. And uh, when we fit the objects into the point cloud, quite often we cannot, we should not follow the, the exact position of the, of the elements because uh, if we are modeling uh, for, if we create an intelligent model, uh, it is uh, it, it is not advisable if the displacements are are shown in the as built model because there is uh, there's always this uh, this this kind of a decision whether as built model has to be kind of a similar to the design model and if we would fit the objects exactly as they are. Later on, if we want, if we wanted, for example, generate ISO drawing, we might have some, we might have some, uh, some, some, some results that are quite uh, not that useful. That's why the client needs to make this decision how how accurate we should be. This it sometimes it's kind of a difficult to explain to the client that uh, we want to be inaccurate on purpose. Somehow, so it, it, it sounds like uh, it is. It is. It, yeah, this is this is this is important element to explain to the client. What else do we have? Um, can we move? Okay, next slide. Okay. Okay. Uh, these are. We can move, we can move on to the pro examples right now. Modeling simulation. Okay. Right now, I will I will present you a short video, just 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 generally to uh, to uh, to visualize the process of the, the modeling process. It, it it what you are seeing here. This is this is my micro special platform. We creating a model. Uh, the, the the main purpose of the video is just to show that this is the manual, manual process. We are often asked by the clients whether we can apply some NI to create an intelligent model. Unfortunately, not yet. Uh, the this is this is in order to create a primitive intelligent model. This is this yeah. We still need to apply some kind of a, like this involves a manual process. Uh, Right now, I'll show you uh, some of the examples of our workflow. Here, you can see the chart uh, of uh, our work workflow. In general, we work in MicroStation, but we also created uh, a plugin for MicroStation, which is called SMB. We call it Smart Model Builder. And majority of the work we, we do in the MicroStation, and all, all, only 35% of the of the digitalization process after export from our station is happening in the other group. This is where we kind of add all of the intelligence, but we can also, we can, we can uh, create all the geometry in macro station. And uh, we can also use some catalogs of the, of the, of the structural elements. And in the next slides, I'll show you, I'll show you some of the, uh, some of the, uh, Examples. So here we create uh, within MacroStation and our plugin. We create also we can create a model with with the hierarchy all already. But just just the example. This is this is the point cloud example of the pump, and here is the model of the pump with the hierarchy already. And the next slide you can see the the very same object within the Aviva environment and after only in an export process. So in that case, in case of the equipment, no other 
work was needed in the API. Uh, this is the example of the of, of some sub platform uh, point cloud uh, model with the QRP already in macro station and the export into into the uh, API environment. The next slide show will show you uh, something that we kind of are uh, kind of a, kind of a proud of, which means that we implemented some intelligence already in in the macro station side within our plugin. Uh, you can see that during the during the uh, creation of the piping, we can we can apply some rules that, for example, some rules, some pipes are connected to each other, and later on, when we want to when we want to edit the pipes, the the rules are using their own rules are working, and the pipes are adjusting itself, as you can as you have just have seen on the video. Uh, that's uh, all. We can move to, to the question question uh, section. Yes, Maris, we can take okay. some questions. Uh, I think four to five questions are being not short term. You can take it down. We have a where can we and another questions. Hold on. Are you oh. able to see the Q and A at the top of the screen? It's start to appear, so we can uh, see the questions. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So the first question: Does system have the ability to export the model into the codes or, or files where they could be used for three D printing? Examples: uh, Geo codes, mesh. Uh, Codes in the file. Well, I guess this is the question about uh, our SMB software, and uh, we could, for now, uh, we can export uh, from from MicroStation from our uh, plugin. We can export a file called uh, macro file, and later on, this this is this open file. Uh, that readable by Aveva. Uh, we could we could impl- include some other codes because this is this uh, the software is 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 uh, purely ours. So if needed, we could quite easily uh, we could quite easily import. Uh, we could add some extra geo codes as 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 asked. The next question. Is it compatible with S3 products 3D GIS? Uh, again, I guess this is a question about SMB. Uh, we have some experience with S3 actually uh, on some other projects, and uh, we could uh, for now we could export uh, geometry. Uh, that's for sure because uh, that's what we do on the project uh, that we would conduct. But for now, the the intelligence, which means that attributes that are connected to the models, they are not readable by S3. Uh, the next question, how do you plan to extend the digital twin offering into uh, internal of the data, data streams, uh, smart operation management? Are the specific needs you could solve using digital uh, twin platform that lets the client read the data linked to the intelligent model in an online dashboard or the control asset remotely. Uh, in general, uh, I guess this is the question related to, it might be a question related to web panel, uh, our, our platform that was presented. And uh, we have, a, uh, we have, uh, I mean, like the partner that we cooperate with that is providing a, a service which is uh, which is related to the internet of the things which is that in general this partner is able to to place the sensors 
on this on the site and then uh, and then um, create some interfaces that could be later on displayed in the web panel. In general, this is doable, but to be frank, we have we have not implemented this in the into practice at the moment. But uh, we are we are like experimenting this with this plot with the, with this part that I had mentioned. And so, so is this solution only for existing plants? Uh, well, yes. To be uh, to be frank, for now uh, we are we are focusing on the digitalization of the brownfield brown environments uh, because that's that's our specialty. You know, we do not design the new plants for for, for now because that's uh, yeah. So the question ju uh, that just come in is that uh, it's been asked by Baran. It is uh, the simulation showed in the intelligent model is run using an inbuilt CFD and FEA solvers or are they integrated with other solver platforms such as Simscape or ANSYS? Let me see that. Deploys. Are they integrated? Uh, for the time being, they, we well, the simulation you have seen in the in the uh, presentation uh, that was just uh, that was just uh, just a render. You know, like uh, we have uh, we have not uh, we have not uh, integrated it with the platforms that you mentioned, but. Uh, for example, I could give you some of some of the examples of simulation that we we've done. Uh, uh, on the one of the plant, we have the simulation of the of the disaster of the spillage of the of, of, of the fluid. For example, a truck, full full truck of of, of uh, just in case of the, there was some kind of a some uh, damage of the truck, and the the whole tank was has leaked. On of the ground, and we had to simulate the uh, the area of the how how far the spillage could affect uh, how far it could kind of uh, go, and then we had to kind of simulate whether we need to build or the client need to build some kind of a uh, some 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 small uh, small elements to prevent the spillage. One of the one of the simulation. Our other simulation we we have uh, we 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 run was the we had to identify all of the flanges uh, of the with with the pipe that included um, metal, uh, the, the gas that was like very it's, it's dangerous and it's highly uh, explosive. And then uh, we 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 simulated the area of the in case the, something would blow up the areas that could be affected. Well, that was another simulation that we done. Uh, but that, the, these are there's just two examples that we have we have done, and we have done it in within within the CAD software without any integration with the software that you mentioned. Another question. All right, thank you, Maris. And uh, there are a few other questions, and I would uh, really appreciate if we can speed it up as we are running out of time. And uh, another question is: How do you ensure the accuracy and reliability of the digital twin over time, especially with changes in the physical plant? It's a good question. Uh, I did, uh, I did uh, try to explain that the accuracy problem is, is, is kind of a tricky one. Uh, because, uh, again, uh, when we create the 3D models, we sometimes we just buy the default we don't want to create some elements too accurate because when we want to simulate it or for example with just just an example of uh, of a uh, iso drawing is a good one uh imagine that we have a pipe that has some kind of a bend because it's been there for like it's been in the in the operation for like 20 years and it's it is hard to believe that like a pipe could become straight when it's like hot, warm, hot and warm, and it's like 
there is always some kind of a evasion on the part. And then when we are coming on a site, when we're scanning, we can see this evasion. Uh, but uh, the main question is, what is the purpose of the of the Asfield model? You know, whether you know we, we want to kind of uh, be as accurate as possible, and then if we, for example, pick the pipe super accurately within like a couple of millimeters, then there would be on the very same pipe there would be, for example, like a, I don't know, ten beds because we want to fit the pipe as accurate as possible. And later on, if we would just click a generate ISO drawing button, I would have to, on the drawing, I would see all of those bands that are very, very kind of, uh, not that uh, uh, they are like kind of superficial bands because that's, these are, they are fitted in the, in the, in the object only to, to, to pre present the uh, displacement of the part. That's why. Uh, on the very, very beginning of the project, we have to come to agreement with the client that uh, we need to find some kind of a, a ratio between the as build and the design. And it's, for example, we tell the client that we will ignore the bands that are smaller than, for example, 20 milli millimeters. If the band is like bigger than 20 millimeters, then we kind of fit the band just to show that actual this pipe has been. Um, that's why, uh, you know, like us build model, it is on purpose inaccurate. I hope this answered the question. Do we have another one? Thank you, Maris. Yeah, I'll club a couple of questions and I think this should be our last one. And how do you ensure the accuracy and uh, reliability of the digital twin over time? especially with changes in the physical plan. And another question is, uh, the simulation showcased in the intelligent model is run using an inbuilt CFD and FPS solvers or are they integrated with other solver platforms such as SimSafe of A and S Y? Uh, I think we've, we've had these questions uh, just yeah. now. I beg your pardon, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so I do have another uh, what will be the time duration for exporting from MicroStation to 3D model software? It is uh, like once, this is straightforward. This, the, the time is on the issue, just a, a, a question of the click. And then like uh, if the model is super big, then the, the uh, export is, could, could take a couple of seconds. So it's it's straightforward. But what is worth mentioning here that I, I showed you during the presentation the chart when it showed like 60 65% and 35% of work in Aveva, 65% in Marco Station. It means that now we can build, uh, like we can, within SMB, Smart Model Builder, our, our plugin, we can build the uh, equipment, we can create uh, structural elements. And they're all concrete elements, uh, but we we also build a piping. But for now, we cannot add intelligence of the piping on within uh, within microstation. So all other disciplines than piping are done within microstation, but the piping uh, geometry as well in microstation, but then we export the piping into Aveva and then we add intelligence, which means that we add tags. Well, tags could be added, but like we can add some uh, like instrumentation and then we can add a uh, catalog of uh, information, etc. So that's why we have to, for now, within our workflow, we have to kind of split this two environment. Is there any other, any other question? No, that's it, Marek. And uh, really, uh, before we wrap it up, I just want to take a moment to thank our speakers, uh, Lucas and Marek, for their insightful presentations and uh, val valuable time. I'd also like to extend my gratitude to all the participants for joining us today and actively contributing to the session. And uh, your engagement is what makes these uh, sessions truly enriching. So thank you once again, and we look forward to seeing you at uh, our future events. 
and uh, for your kind information for those who missed out uh, in the earlier earlier part of the session we will be uploading the video of uh, this session so you can have a glimpse of it so have a great day gentlemen that's all thank you thank you thank you very much thank you thank you have a good day